And in a moment, we're going to build a pivot table using all three of these tables from different workbooks. Now, prior to doing that, I want to show you something else, which is pretty cool. So for this, we're going to switch back into data view by going to the home tab, the view group, and we're going to click on data view. So this is going to take us back to where we have all of our tables. Now I'm going to go to the bottom and let's click on the orders table because here we can see a list of the customer IDs, the order IDs. This is coffee types. Let's expand that out, the units sold, and then we have the date. Now, another thing that we can do within the Power Pivot window is we can make some changes to the way our data is displaying. For example, in the unit sold column, if I select that entire column and go up to the formatting area, I can change the format of this column. So instead of having it on general, I could have it as a whole number. I could add a comma, like so. And the date column, I don't really need the time in here. So once again, I'm going to select the column, go up to formatting, and we can change it in the drop down. So I don't want the time, I'm just going to have the date. So let's change that. There we go. That looks a little bit tidier. So there are a few little changes that you can make within here. Now, the thing that I really want to show you is how you can add what we call a calculated column to our data set. Now, maybe I want to work out or calculate what the total profit is per order. Now, if we take a look at our different tables, for example, the coffee types table, I have information in here which could help me. For example, I have a column called rev per coffee, so revenue per coffee. I also have a column called cost per coffee. So effectively, the profit would be the revenue minus the cost. So what I could do is I could add a column into this table that gives me the profit. So the profit didn't actually exist in any of our original source data, but we can add a calculated column to make it so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click in the column header and let's just call this profit. And what we can now do is add a calculation. Now, the two fields that I need to use in my calculation are both in the table that I'm currently working in because I simply want to minus the cost per coffee from the revenue. So this is really straightforward. We just do this like a regular Excel formula. We type in equals. Notice we're working up in the formula bar. And instead of using cells, as you might within Excel, we use column headings. So the first column heading or field that I'm looking for is revenue per coffee. So if I start to type in rev, it should come up in the drop down. And you can see there it is, coffee types rev per coffee. So it's telling me the table that it's part of. And then we have the field in those square brackets. So I can press tab to select that. And all I want to do here is minus and we want to minus the cost. So I'm going to type in cost. There is the field that I want. You can tab or double click to select it. And then we can press enter and we get our result. And I think I'm also going to format these columns. So I'm just going to increase the decimal places and I'm going to do the same on the other two columns like so. So now it's a bit easier to check. So for cappuccino, the revenue was $4. The cost was $2, which would mean the profit is $2 for flat white. The revenue was $3.50. The cost was a dollar, so the profit was 250. So I can see that this formula is working correctly. Now that I have the profit, I could go back to the orders table and I could add a column in here that multiplies the profit by the units sold. So I'm going to give this column a name. Let's call it total profit. Now, this formula would work slightly differently because we're utilizing fields that are in different tables. So last time it's pretty straightforward because both of the fields were contained within the same table. But this time we want to multiply units sold by the profit in the coffee types table. So if you're referring to another table in a formula, the way that you write your formula out is a little bit different. So let's start out with this table because we want to do the units sold first of all. So I've typed in equals. I'm now up in the formula bar. Let's just type in units. There's the top one that we need, units sold. Press tab to select. And I want to multiply this by the profit column in the coffee types table. Now, because this is a different table, we need to type in related and select that. And now it's coming up with all of the other fields that we have in related tables. 
So this is the one I want, Coffee Types Profit Field. Let's select it. Need to close off the bracket, but that calculation should be correct. Let's hit enter and it's going to go away and calculate everything. And there we go. Now, this is pretty easy to check as well, because if you remember, the profit for cappuccino was $2 and the unit sold is 2064. So the total profit would just be the unit sold multiplied by two. And that is correct for one, two, eight. Let's add some comma separator formatting and take those decimal places down. So that's how you can add calculated columns into your tables, regardless of whether the fields you're using are in the same table or in a different table. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there and click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.